Hey everybody, Mike here from DIY Aqua Pros. Today I'll be showing you how I was able to make a unique internal CO2 diffuser using a simple power head and a conveniently broken piece of lab glassware. So you may already know from my previous video where I made an external trickle filter using a broken 2 liter volumetric flask that I'm all about repurposing damaged lab equipment and trying to incorporate it into my tanks. Click here to check out that video if you haven't seen it. So one day a while back I came across this small 250ml flask that had a close to perfectly sized hole in it. I immediately saw my future CO2 diffuser and began to think of ways to make it work. The small Aquatop power heads that I like to use have an output that fit it pretty well, but there were still a few big pockets where air could escape, so my plan was to just fill them in with silicone and make this a permanent diffuser. Now of course when I was messing with it, I ended up breaking it even more and was forced to improvise. I couldn't just let this one get away from me. I grabbed a sheet of old acrylic and traced out a piece that would roughly cover the bigger hole. I also drilled out a hole in the middle of this piece that would fit snugly over the output of the power head, and then I very carefully silicone this piece into place, which was not easy to do. When everything was dry, I still had to be very careful putting this thing together, as it was still a little on the flimsy side. All I had to do was get this thing in a tank and I knew it would be fine. So here's our completed flask CO2 diffuser. All we have to do now is get the CO2 into the flask and we should be good to go. Now here you have two options. You can either find a way to inject the CO2 directly into the chamber, in this case the flask, or you can just plug your CO2 tubing into the intake of the pump and let the impeller aid in chopping up the bubbles. Now I've always pumped CO2 into power heads because of the obvious increase in diffusion, but some out there may disagree with me here, and if you're using an expensive pump, you may not want to go this route due to the wear CO2 can have on the various rubber parts inside of the pump. I've never had a big problem here, and when you're using these $10 power heads, it's really not something worth worrying about. So once I've got this line hooked in, I also like to cover my power heads intake with a sponge to prevent any large pieces of debris from getting in, but in this case, it's not really going to matter. Once placed in the aquarium and the CO2 running, bubbles will pass through the pump's impeller and be chopped up into tons of smaller bubbles that will diffuse faster in the water column. Pair that with the turbulence and extended time these bubbles have to interact with the water surrounding them makes our use of CO2 much more efficient compared to just letting it bubble up out of the tank via a traditional ceramic diffuser. There are several different ways to diffuse CO2 in the aquarium. Some methods are better than others, but none are 100% efficient. To me, this method is a close second only to external or inline diffusers that have the ability to get almost all of the gas dissolved before it reaches the aquarium. We just try our best to diffuse as much as we can so that we can get the most out of our CO2 supply. It's up to you to pick which method works best for your tank, and I hope this video just shows you you can also be creative in that process. Hey, thanks for watching guys. Don't forget to subscribe and check out DIYAquapros.com for more projects, aquarium science, product reviews, and aquatic life profiles. We'll see you next time.